أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب قلوبنا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المنتجبين We will continue with the أحكام we have talked about different conditions for the fasting, but which was, you know, the abstinence from ten things. If someone abstains from ten things, then this fasting will be valid. Yet, there are additional conditions that need to be met in order for the fasting to be valid again. It is not only those ten things. What are those conditions? The first condition is Islam. You see, non-Muslim, even if he intends to do the fasting, he would like to do the fasting, yet, and he practices it, this fasting will not be considered for him as a credit until he becomes Muslim, until he declares Islam. At that time, the fasting becomes, you know, just like any other Muslim who's fasting. So one condition for the fasting to be correct is being a Muslim. Now there is a debate between scholars that the non-Muslims are also obligated, I mean on the day of judgment, on the hereafter, God will hold them responsible for furu' al-deen, meaning for the prayers, fasting, hajj, zakat, homes. A non-Muslim person, when he dies, and at the time of the hereafter, will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hold them responsible for those things or only hold them responsible for Islam? Tell them why you didn't become Muslim. Once, you know, they bring an excuse, they are released. Some scholars say no. Even for Furu'iddin, they are held responsible. God not only asked them about Islam, tell them why you didn't bring faith. Why didn't you become faithful? Rather, ask them about the prayers, about fasting, about hajj, and the rest of the rituals that we perform. Now, what is the reason for this? Of course, this is not all the scholars. I said a group of scholars who say this. A large group of scholars who claim that non-Muslims are also held responsible for their, you know, for the rituals, for the Torah king. Now, what is this? Indicated. What is the reason for this? They say the reason for this is Quran itself. God, when it talks about Hajj, what does it say? It says, Walillahi ala nasi hajjul bayt. Says that's mandatory. The Hajj is mandatory upon people. Does not say Muslim. Does not say, oh, you people, you should be going to Hajj with the Muslims. Rather, it says, Walillahi ala nas, the masses. The masses are held responsible for this or Ya Bani Adam Khudu Zinatakum Inda Kulli Masjid. Whenever you go to a masjid, you have to have, you know, the correct and proper attire. So through those ayat, you can, you know, you can discern that the non-Muslims are also responsible for the rituals. There is an obvious ayat. The people of heaven ask the people of Jahannam. You know, in the hereafter. Tell them who put the who put you to what did put you to Jahannam? Masalakum fi sapa. How did you end up in Jahannam? They say, Qalu lamna kumin al Musalli. We were not part of the Musalli, those who perform perform the prayers. Walamna kunu baimun miski. We were not feeding the poor. Wa kunna nahuba ma'al khaali. We were taken the side of shallowly and playfully. Those are the Muslims, you know. Who would, a Muslim would not, a Muslim would not reject the Yom Yom So in this ayah clearly says those who would reject the Yom after being the Muslim, also God hold them responsible for not being, you know, among those who do the prayers. Of course, Ayatollah al Khoi. The late Ayatollah al Khoi rejects this notion. He says that when it means who are the Muslims? 
the Muslims. So God, instead of saying that they didn't say we are not among Muslims, they said we are not among the groups who perform the prayers. But a large group of the ulama say that the mushrikeen also, the non-Muslims, are held responsible for the ahkam as well. So, first condition for the fasting to be correct and valid, you have to be, the person has to be Muslim. The second condition is sanity. You know, any insane, anyone who has a problem, mentally has a problem, that person is executed. There is a principle. It says that You know, this brain, this intellect is all endowment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a blessing, a mercy from God. So if God takes this mercy, what happens? What is respond what we are responsible for also becomes invalid. Why? Because based on our brain, rationality and intellect we pray, not based on our emotion or feelings. It is not feeling. It is the mind who showed us who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who tells us what are the prayers, how we should do. Those things all make sense to our own brain, our own thought. Therefore, sanity is a condition. Anyone who is insane also, the fasting becomes, you know, invalid for him. He doesn't have to do the fasting. Number three, Consciousness. The person has to be conscious. If he's unconscious, again, fasting is not valuable. For those who are in the hospital, for a few days they feel unconscious. They don't have to do the fasting. As long as he's conscious, there is fasting applied to him. Number four is for the ladies. During a specific time of the month, they cannot do the fasting. Now, if they enter this period even two minutes before dusk, before sun sunset, their fasting becomes invalid. So that's number four. You know, number five. If the fasting is considered harmful for the person, again, someone has to be sound and fit, meaning he should not be physically ill. By saying physically ill, doesn't mean that if somebody who's broken his hand. You don't say, I am not fasting because I am sick. The relationship between broken hand and fasting is very rare. There is no such thing. You know, maybe, yes, unless the pain is so much, he has to take painkiller, he cannot resist the pain. At that time, that's another issue. But if someone, for example, has cut his, his, you know, his finger and say, I am sick, uh, it, doesn't, it, doesn't, you know, it doesn't get to that point. It is when, when the logic say, when he knows for himself and the doctor tells him that you are sick, you cannot, you know, you cannot carry your fasting, especially if the sickness gets prolonged. Meaning that through his fasting, he cannot take the medicine, cannot take tablets, therefore you will see the sickness stays with him longer. Sickness will invalidate the fasting, meaning that after, if he do the fasting, he has to repeat them after Ramadan. You know, you will be obligated for that. And number six is not to be traveling. We've talked about it on the first night, but there is a couple points. A traveler is someone who leaves the city beyond 48 kilometers if he's going one way. I decide to leave Halifax. Once I decide to leave Halifax more than 48 kilometers on my way back, I become a traveler. If I am a resident of Halifax, I need to leave Halifax more than 24 kilometers and come back again 24 kilometers. So the total becomes 48. So it's 48, either one way or round it. So it has to be 48 kilometers, which is around 6 Fersak. You know, Fersak is probably around, around uh, 6 kilometers or, or, or more or less. I don't know exactly. How much is that? But when you calculate it, it tends to be in that area. 24, so probably 4 kilometers per person. That is the right. Now, there are two exceptions for travelers. One, that the scholars say, meaning his job is a travel. Like who? Whose job is a travel? 
the taxi driver if he goes outside of the city. The driver of the trailer, for example, who they, they take you know goods from one city to another. The pilot, the pilot, the captain of a vessel, you know, those captain of the train, captain of the vessel, captain of the airplane, those their job is to travel. They have to travel in order to make their you know make their salaries and live. This type of person, if during the travel he has to do the fasting. And his prayer is complete fast. Now, if this person, let's say this pilot, chose to travel for leisure, not for trip, but for business, at that time he breaks his fast. But while he's in work, at work, traveling in the airplane for his work, he has to keep his fasting and his prayers in full way. So this is one exception. Men show His job is to travel. The second one is kathir Someone who travels a lot. Now this is subjective. Each island, each scholar has a, its own definition. Some of the ulama, some of the scholars say that someone whose travel time is more than his present time. You know, I am most of the time I am on the travel. When I get to town only for a few days again, I travel. Ayatollah Sistani has another definition. He says one third of the year. Year is 12 months. If someone spends four months of his year outside of his town, traveling, it doesn't have to be consistent, you know, a few days now, a few days later on. In total, four months in a year, that person is considered to be you know, Kathir al Safa, at that time he will not break his fasting, will do the fasting, as well as, you know, the complete um, prayers that he does. So far, so good. Those are the six conditions need to be met in order for the fasting to be correct. Now, if someone has difficulty, his job, for example, let's say he's in bacon. A baker, you know, a cook, a chef, always dealing with heat, especially in summer. Now, you know, in this country, you don't see summer for this. It's always spring, alhamdulillah. But back in our homes, you know, when it gets to 50 degrees, 55 degrees Celsius, the bakery you know, has to cook for the, to bake the, 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 you know, the bread for the people. Now, the scholars say, when there is a contradiction, meaning, if he does the work, he has to break the fasting, otherwise it's too, so much difficult for him. Or he does the fasting and doesn't do the work. The scholars say if he can manage not to work, he has to stay at home, should stop working. Unless he goes through hardship, difficulty, he cannot, you know, cannot survive. He has dependence on him. The salary will be, you know, the, the job will, they will kick him out of his job. He loses his job and becomes tremendously difficult for him. At that time, he can work and break the fasting. But when he breaks the fasting, he cannot eat and drink as much as he can. He can keep it to the minimum. But after Ramadan, he has to find a way, a time, to make up for all those days that have been, you know, broken. Like a construction worker. In the sweltering sun, he has to build homes, you know, buildings. And without his job, you know, he cannot survive. At that time, the scholars say allow him to break his fasting, provided that he will make it another time. Another masala I have said it before, again I will repeat it. Someone who stahab, someone who fasts for you know not for obligation, rather, you know, for advisory. If he has indebted, meaning that he has some debts in fasting, he, he owes some fasting, he cannot do the fasting until he finishes with his, you know, the mandatory fasting. Once he's done, then he will start to do the fasting.